Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to talk about some problems involving arcs of a circle. All right, just two problems today. The first problem is going to be number 24 in the book. We're given circle P is congruent to circle Q. So just be careful here. Circle P, I didn't draw this exactly right, but circle P, P is the center of this black circle on the left. And then uh, Q is the center of the circle, black circle on the right. Uh, we also know that X, Y is equal to eight. So I can say that uh, the distance here, X to Y is equal to eight. Uh, and I know that uh, P is perpendicular to, or the distance P to Z is gonna be uh, the shortest distance. So P is perpendicular to X, Y. It also divides this chord X, Y as does Q to Z. So I know that Q, uh, X, Z, and uh, Z, Y are both equal to four. So I'm gonna label X, Z as equal to four units. Uh, now I also know that R, P, and Q, S are both equal to one, so I've identified them as one unit. And really the trick to this problem is to identify the length of the radius. And the length of the radius, in this case, we're going to draw a line from X to Q, and we can see that that is also the distance from P to uh, this point S, which is on the outside of the circle. And that distance is gonna be X plus X plus one, or two X plus one. So I'm gonna write in here the uh, distance two X plus one. Uh, we have a right triangle here in X, Z, Q. So I'll just shade that uh, real briefly and then erase it. So X, Z, Q is my right triangle with the hypotenuse equal to two X plus one units, uh, the legs equal to four units and X units respectively. So we have a right triangle we can uh, solve for X based on what we know about the Pythagorean theorem. So I have four squared plus X squared is equal to two X plus one squared. That gives me 16 squared plus X squared is equal to four X squared plus four X plus one. Uh, I'm gonna subtract X squared from both sides. Uh, subtract, this is not squared, it's just 16. Uh, I'm gonna subtract X squared from both sides, subtract 16 from both sides, and I'm left with three X squared plus four X minus 15 is equal to zero using my zero product property. And then I can factor this into three X uh, minus five times X plus three, and that leaves me with the result of x is equal to uh, five thirds, and x is equal to negative three. Well, we know x can't be a negative value because x is a distance, so negative three is not gonna work. x is equal to five thirds. Now I wanna find the distance from p to q, and p to q is just two x. So p q is going to be equal to 10 thirds. All right, moving on to the second problem. Uh, in this problem, we're gonna prove that if an equilateral polygon is inscribed in a circle, then it is equiangular. So let's just identify this as A, B, and C. And in this case, we're gonna identify why this is the case for a polygon based on two examples. One is a triangle and one is a square. Uh, so let's start with the triangle first and you'll see the pattern probably after I uh, finish talking about the square. So I've inscribed an equilateral polygon, it's an equilateral triangle. Um, then I've drawn the um, uh, segment from the vertex to the center of the circle. And uh, because already I have a circle I congruent, I know that we'll say this is circle O, A, O, B, O, and C, O are all gonna be congruent. So you can see by side, 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 I have three separate triangles that are all congruent. Uh, the angles are going to be congruent. And so since I have two angles here, two angles for angle C and two angles for angle A, um, I know that those sums are going to be congruent as well. So angle A, B, and C are going to be congruent. So prove that if an equilateral uh, polygon is inscribed in a circle, then it is equiangular. So I just proved that for a triangle. Now let's see why it's going to hold true for any polygon. And I'm gonna show you what happens with a square. So again, I have A, B, C square, A, B, C, D. 
And what ends up happening is I just end up drawing uh, the number of triangles relative to the number of sides, so uh, inside of the given figure. So in this case, I had three triangles, three sides to a triangle, and I was showing that a triangle inscribed in a circle is equiangular. In this case, I have a, a square inscribed in a uh, circle is going to be equiangular, basically, because I have all far, four sides that are going to be congruent. I guess it could be a rhombus because I haven't proven yet that angle A, B, or C, or D is uh, a right angle. But what we have here, again, is four, four, one, two, three, four triangles based on the number of sides for the polygon. And because all four triangles are ultimately going to be congruent by side, 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 uh, we can see here that uh, angle DA, we'll call this center O, angle AOB, angle BOC, angle COD uh, are all, all good, I'm sorry, DAO, uh, OAB, uh, AO, or, I'm sorry, ABO, OBC, uh, BCO, OCD, and uh, we miss an ODA are all going to be congruent uh, by CVCTC. So we have three sets or four sets of congruent triangles um, and also because the sides are congruent the uh, angles opposite them are congruent so all of these angles are going to be congruent the four triangles are going to be congruent and so if uh, congruent angles are added to congruent angles the sums of the angles are going to be congruent so I have an equiangular polygon here and so it doesn't really matter how many sides I have I'll end up having the number of sides the number of congruent triangles so if I have a six-sided figure I'll end up with six congruent triangles within that six-sided figure and I'll be able to sum the uh, angle measures for each of the angles that comprise the uh, interior angles of the polygon that is inscribed in the circle all right, that's it for Rotten Math. Very quick uh, couple of problems. Uh, come and join us next time. We're going to talk about secants and tangents on Rotten Math.